Hi, and in this video of the C++ Crash Course, we're going to be going over C++ variables. So we're going to be looking at a new file this time. This time it's going to be variables.cpp. Now, in this file, we see a couple things that we've seen before. So we see an include statement um, for the IO stream because we want to print some stuff out still. And we still see we're using namespace standard because you know it's just convenient for us when we have to print things. Uh, again, our our main function that's required in every single program is here as well. So let's talk a little bit about variables. So variables allow us to you know actually store things in our program, and so we give them names. So the way we variables really have you know two steps or two steps when we're talking about you know what we do when we first get variables so it's declaration and initialization in the declaration stage we tell the compiler I want you to give me you know some chunk of memory and I'm going to refer to it with some identifier so in the case right here we're saying we're telling the compiler give me an integers worth of memory so an integer will be four bytes um, and I'm going to refer to that four bytes of memory as the identifier A. So everywhere I say A, I'm going to refer to that piece of memory that the compiler gave me. Now, the second part of uh, you know getting started with uh, variables is the initialization stage. Now, the initialization is just giving you know some value to uh, your declared variables. Remember, they have to be declared ahead of time. So the reason why that is is, you know, like we said, when we declare a variable, we ask for memory. If we try to assign something before we have the memory, well, there's an obvious problem there. We've got no place to put it. So in this case, we are declaring the variables first, and then we are assigning them. So in this case, its assignment is very simple. So in the case of assigning these integers, we just say maybe a is equal to 5 and then B is equal to 10 and we leave some uninitialized for the time being now we don't need to separate these two things if we wanted to we could also up here do declaration and initialization at the same time so we could say you know a equals 5 here and B equals 10 here and everything would still work exactly the same or we could say 12 or 34, you know, anything like that works. Uh, but of course, after we get to this part of the code, we'd go back to A being 5 and B being 10. So for the time being, at least, we'll just separate declaration and initialization in this example. Now moving on to operators. So there's a ton of operators in C++. Uh, so we have this assignment operator, right? The equal sign. Then we have addition. Of course, we could also do uh, subtraction. For multiplication, we use the star. For division, we'll use the slash. Uh, there's also some logical operators as well that we'll get into more when we talk about flow control. Um, but we can use things like less than or less than or uh, less than or equal greater than, greater than, or equal. And we can also say things like not equal. And we say not using this, uh, the exclamation point, sometimes referred to as a, a bang symbol. So not this would be not equal. So the sum is equal to A is not equal to B. So that's a logical expression. So if the two are not equal, then uh, or we, we just we just assign whatever the result of a not equals b is. So if if they are not equal, we would get a one. If it is equal, if they are equal, we would get a zero. Uh, and the reason why we get that is because uh, a one uh, represents true, and zero represents false in C plus plus. And then we have you know what we kind of had before as far as a C out kind of a print statement but we see it's a little bit longer but the idea is exactly the same so we still have the C out object from the standard library 
remember we don't have to put this std colon colon thing that we need to use the c out from the standard scope because we already said using namespace standard then we see we print a string the sum of and then if we want to we can also print out variables as well we just have to separate you know the variable identifier from this string so in this case we just add a couple more less than signs put the variable in there and then if we want to print out anything else on the other side we can keep adding these as many as we want and then we see we're using another thing from this time last time we last time we used the slash n to create a new line we can also use the uh, int line uh, from the standard library. Uh, remember, you know, this is from std, uh, the standard scope, so we don't need to put that in front of it as well. So same scope as uh, cout is, but this is just a you know, slightly convenient utility instead of having to write you know, slash n over here. Okay. And then we'll return zero because remember it's a main function that is of integer type. So we should return an integer. So let's go ahead and compile this in the same way that we've compiled all of our, uh, well, I say all of our, the same way we compiled hello world, which is G plus plus dash O. We'll call the output just variables. And then our input will be variables.cpp. Looks like we didn't make any mistakes. And let's run it. So remember, in our original file, we are assigning A, 5, and we're assigning B, 10, and then we're computing the sum, and we're printing out the sum of A, which is 5, and B, which is 10, is, and then we're printing out the sum, which should be 15. So let's go ahead and run it. So dot slash variables, and we get the sum of 5 and 10 is 15. So it looks like we got the right answer. Now, there's more than just integer variables. There's a lot of data types in C++. So we'll just briefly go over some of the other ones. We also have the float data type, which is for floating point numbers. So this would be things like maybe 5.823. And we can, maybe we'll make this, all of these floats. And we'll do some floating point arithmetic. And we don't need the zero there. And we see that we can recompile this program. And instead of printing out, uh, you know, an integer addition, we printed out uh, a floating point. Uh, addition and we get the right answer. Uh, there's other data types as well so if we want to you know have a specific data type for true and false there's another inherent data type called bool that we could have. Maybe we'll call it is true and we can assign this a value like specifically true. That's another built-in part of the C++ language. There's predefined, you know, for Booleans, there's true, and then there's also false that we can use. Uh, there's also uh, characters. So characters you can think of as either small integers. So integers are 32 bits or four bytes, but a char or a character is only a single byte. So these are often used for, you know, a couple things, either, you know, some small integer or, you know, you can also string together a lot of characters and you can use them to build up strings. So if we wanted to, we could say that this constant character pointer and maybe we'll call this some string is equal to and we'll just say it says, hey there, fella. And a new line. Right. Now, we won't get into a lot of these things. You know, when we write constant in front of anything, that just tells the compiler that this thing doesn't change. 
Now, in this case, we use this thing called a character pointer. We'll kind of ignore pointers for right now, but you can think of this as saying, you know, it just points to something, right? Instead of being a value itself, it points to values. Now, in this case, we want, you know, basically an array. So we want many, many characters. So this pointer here points to, you know, a set of some characters. And specifically, uh, it points to the first character, right? And, but we allocate space for all of these characters. And then we can print it out just like everything else. So we'll print it out right before the sum so we can do C out. Oops. That's not how you spell C out. And then we can just put some string here. Remember, we already put the slash in up here at, with some string, so we don't need to do this end line or end L. And we'll go ahead and compile. So again, we'll call G++. On our output file name will be variables, and our input files will just be variables.cpp. We compile, and we run, and there we have it. We get the, hey there, fella, and then we get that floating point arithmetic. Now, there's plenty of good resources on all the operators that exist in C++. This was just kind of a brief overview of some of them and a brief overview of some of the more common data types as well. In later videos, we'll definitely be using pretty much all of the different data types, if not, if not all, a lot of the different data types that are commonly used, so stick around for that. Again, all the code is being uploaded to the GitHub page for Copy Before Arch under the C++ Crash Course repo. And right now, these are all going in fundamental concepts. So by the time this video is up, we not only will have Hello World up here, but we'll also have this variables.cpp. Thanks for watching.